Hey everybody, it's Chugger Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we came back to Frontier Village, helped out a bunch of the locals, and became an honorary nop on ourselves. This time, we are going to be playing the reward that we get for getting such high affinity with Central Bionis. Yes, believe it or not, there is a greater still reward than becoming an honorary nop on. We're going to be talking to Lupa because he, she, I don't know, uh, has a very special line of quests that you can only complete if you have three-star affinity with Central Bionis. So let's get to it. Me? Me? Friends, did you see my Grampy Pond anywhere? I'm here to listen. Yes, we might be able to help. He should be in Colony 6, but there has been no contact from him since the Mechon attack. Ooh, worrying. Um, oh no, please don't tell me. All killed! A few managed to escape but it would be difficult for any of those to contact this village. Actually, I want friends to take him some secret Nopon elixir. First, I need help making it. Do friends mind helping me? We have Kind Lupa's Grampy Pond. Screw those ruins in Magna Forest now. We want to learn about somebody's grandpa. <laughs> friends will do it. Thank you. You can count on us. We'll get it done. Just because we are here to put out fires all over this dang world. First, I need three things. Hades Beetles, All-Seeing Eyes, and Potent Brog Poisons. Well, two of those sound like Kid Icarus references. Uh, two out of three ain't bad, I guess. And we also get Secret Elixir Ingredients, listing off the different objectives we need to complete to make the elixir. We have all the Hades Beetles. Oh, pity, Pat, you are so good at finding out. All three of Palutena's All-Seeing Eyes. Oh, man, did we have all these things that... Well, I guess, like I said, two out of three ain't bad. So, good news and bad news. The bad news is, I am missing the one item in this entire quest that you cannot trade for. The good news, however, is that I need to go to Storm Marsh to go get it and it's so pretty here. Okay, well, in all seriousness, before we do this quest, I do want to take a bit of a slight detour. And this brings me to more good news and bad news. Well, remember that quest with Katja first did the first time we were here in Satoral Marsh and I quit without saving because I said that I wanted to show the contents of this quest now because it was really interesting foreshadowing, but we didn't have the proper character to comment on it with. Well, um, okay. I had seen multiple sources over the years claim that Fiora would comment on this quest if you waited till you got her to do this, and I really wanted to show it, but I never actually got to do it myself just because I never really thought to save this quest until then. But it seems that whenever you talk to Kasha when doing this, you just simply don't get any comments from Fiora. Shulk really is the only one that comments on this quest. I know, it's kind of a shame, and I saw multiple things uh, claiming this, though, so I kind of, so I did believe it. But, uh, yeah, it turned out not to be true, just like a few other things about certain characters commenting on quests. I don't know what it is with quest commenting and just being really inconsistent across different guides, but I guess that's it. I'd heard it mentioned before by just people in general that I'd talked to, but, hey... Guess I was wrong to believe it. On the plus side, though, even though I have to pointlessly do this quest a second time, I can at least do something I didn't get to do the last time when doing it. Over at the Exile Fortress where you need to go, you can sneak in through the back and avoid the fight with the unique monster entirely, which I recommended last time, but we are now much higher than level than it, and we can take it on and get the affinity coin that we never got before. And wouldn't you know it, I actually get a chance to show off Fiora's new talent art from the Freyadron, so let's do this. Check it out, Gun Drones 1. Look at this! Just fills the entire room with damage! It's amazing! Look at that party gauge! It is already full! Also, fills the room with damage needs to totally be something that I say more often because that just feels cool to say, man. Uh, alright. So yeah, that fills the party gauge really freaking fast. It's a multi-hit move that just has incredible range of ether damage. Not only that, but just, it feels really good to use. I'd recommend it if you want to make Fiora more of a tank, though, because... That could lead to her drawing aggro from enemies that you just simply don't want her to draw aggro from. But other than that, uh, yeah, really, really nice attack. I mostly have her outfitted for offense. Like I've said before, I don't really like making her more of a defensive character. But, you know, she is good at what... I got a vision during this. What? Wh oh! Ooh! Um, okay, that's good enough reason for a vision. Inflicts instant death. Um, guys, guys, guys. Uh, help me up, please. Okay, good, it's gonna miss now. Uh, so it was just because I was toppled. Uh, but yeah, I was just like, wait a minute, that's kind of pathetic that I'm getting a vision right here and now, though, but nah, getting, uh, getting something that inflicts since death, yeah, that is reason enough for that. Anyway, I've shown off the new art, these guys are pretty much doomed, let's just cut to the end of this. Got the achievement, I can beat anyone, you get that for using 100 arts as Fiora, and actually, you can get that at the very beginning of the adventure when she is still a Homs, it actually cumulatively counts it. And with that, we actually also got the last ingredient we needed for the secret elixir. 
There we go. Potent Brog Poison. We got both of those. Um, I don't know why you'd want to put poison in it, but I guess technically there are poison ingredients in cooking, so I don't know. Maybe the poison's getting cooked out of it. Either way, we got to go back and see Lupa at Frontier Village now. We got your ingredients and two Kid Icarus Uprising references in there. I agree. It is very fantastic. It's a fantastic game to reference. It is just a fantastic game in general, so good on you for including those references into that elixir. It'll be good for the old chap. Managed to make Grabby Pond secret nap on elixir. Grabby Pond drink it every day. He said it for his health. I want friends to take some of his eli some of this elixir to Grampy Pond. So we have the secret nap on elixir. Off we go to Colony Six. According to our quest log, the nap on that we need to speak to is none other than Satata. We have met him before. Happens to be Kind Lupa's Grampy Pond. Let's talk to him, Hakuna Satata. Satata, know that smell? Friends carry secret nap on elixir. Friends got that back at Frontier Village. Am I wrong? Well, well then. She remembers everything Satata taught her about secret elixir. Tell her not to worry about me. She is capable of finding out secrets of Machna without me. Aw, so that does indeed confirm that she is trying to find out the secrets of Machna Forest, just like we uh, heard before from the Nopon researchers. But, Satana, now that we're actually getting a chance to talk to him, lets me bring up something else. He is actually a very interesting character. Um, in the, in the Japanese and French versions of Xenoblade Chronicles, he is named Tatsu. Tatsu actually happens to be the name of a Nopon party member that is going to be in Xenoblade Chronicles X. And Tatsu also wears googly glasses in both that game and this game. Now, they do have different fur colors, so I, it's doubtful that they're the exact same Nopon, but who knows? Maybe the party member that'll be in Xenoblade Chronicles X is like a son or a grandson to this Tatsu or something like that. I don't know. Perhaps maybe a brother or sister of Lupa may indeed be that party member. Who knows? Could be of even further of a descendant. Maybe Lupa will name some kid after them. I don't know. But I just kind of found that interesting that those two share a name and they both wear googly glasses. You met my Grampy Pond? That fantastic! I'm so happy to hear he well! Good, it was our pleasure. Ricky, no surprise we do so good! Charla work really hard! Aw, thank you, Ricky. You helped, too. Grampy Ponsatata spoke about secrets of Machna. I will find out the truth behind these secrets. Once we've completed that, wouldn't you know it, as you would guess, Lupa will have another quest for you. Here upon here to save your troubles! So, there are ancient ruins in Machna, according to Lupa. I want to do some research there, but the door will not open. Wow, this is crisis, yes! Yeah, it sounds bad. <laughs> Fiora took the words right out of my mouth. I was hoping you would say that. Have friends ever been to ruins? That where I want to do some surveying. Ricky did see really old house out there. <laughs> what Lupa going to do in old haunted house? Frighten ghost to death? Ha ha ha! Didn't I just say I want to do a survey there? Nopon have yet to learn about those ruins and... Stop! Lupa talk too much. Time to decide. You have such a way with words, Ricky. You are so deep. So we need to find three ancient documents to open the door. All are hidden throughout Machna Forest. And actually, we saw one of these earlier. How about we get into the locations of those? First off, I want to go to the Waypoint Beacon. I know that the quest bar down at the bottom does loosely mention where these are, but I think I kind of want to show these because they are a little bit complicated. Over by Bridge 2, this is a very important location in this quest in that it has two documents near it, but... As we cross the bridge, you can see that view of Great Machna Falls in the distance, the iconic view that we have talked about many, many times in this journey. And that view brings me to something that I've wanted to talk about. Believe it or not, doing side quests at this particular moment in the story is one of my favorite little things to do in just my own personal way that I play. Why is that? Well, we just got Fiora back as a party member after thinking that she was dead for a very long time. We went on this huge journey specifically to avenge her in the first place, even though it's become much more than that now. Without her death, this journey would have never happened to begin with. And not only that, but because she was a mech on this entire time, she missed out on this journey. She didn't get to see any of these places around Bionis, and I jumped off the wrong cliff. Um, yeah, give me a moment. Jumping off the correct cliff this time! Yeah, who knew that you could jump off of a cliff incorrectly? Well, actually, yeah, you can, but anyway. Um... Fiora, despite being the catalyst for this journey, she missed out on seeing all these rare sights that we took in. She did not get to go around and see all these different places, and just to kind of show how much we've all missed Fiora after all this time, 
I always just saw it as a nice gesture to go around the world, let her see all these places, accept quests that we couldn't do before, and have her be a part of making Bionis a better place. It's just, not only that, but a lot of the heart-to-hearts that we couldn't view up to this point are now viewable because we have Fiora. She was involved in a lot of heart- uh, she would have been involved in a lot of heart-to-hearts had she been with us all this time. And because of that, I just think that not only does it let her take in all these sights and see the world, which she would, didn't get to do in her life as a Homs, but there was also the fact that she might form new bonds with people that she already knew or perhaps make new friends in this group already. Um, in the form of the heart to hearts and before people tell me that I'm thinking way too deep into this and getting attached to these characters Perhaps I am but the point is that Dunban did say in a heart to heart that Fiora only ever got to see Colony 9 Tefra cave and Bionis leg within her life and we have seen a lot more sites than just those areas So I like to think that I'm not totally crazy for thinking It's just a really heartwarming thing to do and something that I personally enjoy doing on a sentimental level Anyway, we got all the documents Let's head back to Frontier Village and see if we can't make the world a better place with Fiora in the group. That ramble done, though, we can go back to Lupa. We have all the ancient documents, and... Hmm, the key to deciphering this lie in another document. Thank God we didn't have to collect that, right? I should be able to read this. I can decipher it right away. Come back to me shortly. Twelve seconds later, Lupa has a new quest for us. I know how to open the door of Machina Ruins. Tell here upon Ricky! Tell, tell, tell! I know I want to get in there too, though, but Ricky, that is a little bit rude. Ancient documents say to recite the prayer in front of the ruins. Wow, Lupa able to read such tattered book! Well done! Ricky no able to read any of those curly squiggles! <laughs> These not curly squiggles, this is important ancient, ancient writing. Friends not moved by the fact that writing existed in ancient times? Do friends want to try to delve deeper into the mystery of the ruins? We have Mystery of Machina Ruins 2! Sounds like we're going to be getting into the good stuff, and by the good stuff, I mean those ruins after we recite that prayer! Lucky for us, we made sure to discover King Agni's tomb last time we were here, so we can skip travel right there! Let's go ahead and recite the prayer. If that sound effect was Ricky saying the prayer, I really want to know how he made that sound. I'll have to ask him later. So, with this open... We get kind of a disturbing sight of a lot of fallen Ignas just laying all over the ground. Not only that, but we have some Machna Antals that are vision type. Uh, interesting. We also have some Vangs that are a uh, sound type, and should we have done this on our um, last visit to Magna Forest? Because remember, you do have to have cleared Prison Island in order to do this because you need access to this area. Um, these enemies might have been very, very, very tough. As in, well, at the end of this, in the middle of all these corpses, we see who felled them all. Brutal Gravar. This guy has some really mean spike attacks. I would highly recommend having some method of dealing with them. Be them spike defense gems, having Shulk use them out of purge, or just maybe even melee as mind blast if you really want to get technical with it. Personally, I just want to use Monata purge and get this over with. Let's do this. I'm really feeling it. Yay, Shulk. <laughs> Fiora is really tired of that meme. Sorry I killed Brutal Gravar right here and had this giant gold chest crush your head, but you're dead, I doubt you care. And ooh, um, okay. That weapon for Ricky. Normally I, you know, find other times to show equipment, like I don't like to dwell on it too much just at random like this, but I want to show this. The Queen Frog. This item is amazing. Look at that. It is just this happy little frog sitting atop a throne, and Ricky uses it as a weapon. If that's not the most adorable thing you've seen all week, I'd like to know what is. Because that's pretty friggin' adorable. But, uh, I don't really want to use it. I'm just gonna switch back to the Machina Biter because it's more powerful. With that done, though, how about we investigate? Doesn't look like I can open the giant coffin. But I can feel a draft coming from a gap below the coffin. We should go back and tell Lupa. What happens if we try to open it anyway? It is too heavy to open. I thought I'd try thinking outside the box. Because I'm outside the box! Hello there, Lupa. We killed the giant maddening lizard. I sure hope you support your hero upon now. So, this coffin, this indication of these ruins of the ancient giants. Hmm, okay. Friends felt a breeze from below underneath the coffin? So, something may lie beyond the coffin. Beyond the coffin sounds like a way to talk about dying or something like that. So, ancient giants lived in Machna. This wonderful, I'll say. Always love to hear more about the mythology of this world, and once again, 
We have stumbled upon Giant's Ruins. We found some in Satoru Marsh. Prison Island had a giant in it. And now we have Giant's Ruins that are in Magna Forest. But after completing that, as you can guess, Lupa has more for us to do because we did not do everything. Next mystery involves that coffin, so let's see here. Uh, yeah, you guys, you want to know. You find war- <laughs> I like how viewers like, yeah, I want to know too, and then just doesn't even look this way. Find warriors have no problem moving the coffin. C c coffin with dead thing in it. Lupo wants us to move it. Wah! What if skeleton monsters jump out on Ricky? You are such a hero, Ricky. Ah, uh, yes. If friends find bones, then bring them here to me. <laughs> it may help us understand the biology of the giants. B -b bones? Lupo wants us to bring b bones. Wah! 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 I'm so sorry. I just really had to like get into that. So. Uh, we have Mystery of Magna Ruins 3. We need Lubricant Oil to move the Heavy Coffin. We get Lubricant Oil for completing this. Talk about a self-defeating goal. Need some Algora Sap and Aqueous Andos Oil. Friends can get these in Machina and Aerith Sea. I will then blend them together. Easy peasy, here upon take care of it. That's right, leave it to us! Okay, I'm just getting way too into it at this point. I don't want to do voices with these characters. They have official voices. I just like doing Ricky's little dialect, and that's pretty much it. So, the Aqueous Andos oil that you need for this is pretty straightforward. You can get it from an enemy, or you can trade for it. The sap that you need, the Algora sap, is kind of a different story. It's actually a key item. So, you do not get it for, de for defeating an enemy. You do not get it from trades or anything like that. Instead, you need to go to the Nopon Arc, and you can see that there is some key items that are on the map. We need to go through here, and these waterfalls are so pretty at night. I think I said this last time we were here, though, but still. It needs emphasis. I was so drawn into by the waterfalls that I briefly forgot the word. And right over here, you can see that there is a gigantic Magna Brog blocking the way. Yeah, uh, let's get behind it and uh, let's do a happy happy. Let's do a hero time. And uh, I was going to bite his butt, but unfortunately I did damage. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. It was uh, Ryan and Fiora that did damage. Okay, that works out. I didn't even get to go behind him and bite his butt. I am sorely disappointed. So, we go past him, and we discover a not-secret area? Yeah, the Sap Cave, despite being really pretty and something that you could very easily gloss over and something that's kind of hidden, it's actually not a hidden area, and I find that a little confusing. I don't really get how or why, but hey, I guess that makes me less over-leveled if it's not a secret area. Yay. Hello again, Lupagin. We got all the materials that you needed, so you'll mix them together, and we will be able to get ourselves that lubricant oil. Um, now that I realize it, that sounds very suggestive, actually. Use on coffin, it should move easily. I look forward to hearing what lies beyond the coffin. Sounds like a metaphor for the afterlife. So we get ourselves the lubricant oil, and Mr. Magnum Ruins 4 pops up immediately. It gets just triggered by this. So we have to use the lubricant oil on the coffin, and there is no indication what our reward is going to be for this. Oh boy. Oh, we've got a level up, actually. Uh, at least on Ryan, we did. So, what do we get for opening this coffin? We have been working towards it for what feels like ages at this point. We discovered these ruins a long time ago, they didn't have any immediate purpose. We now suddenly are learning about them and talking to Lupa. There are all these steps involved in having to get to the end of the ruins and open up the coffin that's there. So, what could be in there? Well, we're about to find out. Agni's Coffin. We're able to go down below into Agni's Tomb, the very area that we heard about, and right here. There are just treasure... There are just treasure chests in the middle of Little Room. Let's go tell Lupa. Um... We're not even gonna open it, we're just gonna go to Lupa? I wanted to open the box! So friends found a small room under the coffin, and a single treasure chest inside. It may have been a custom of the giants to build the secret room. These very intriguing results. I will let friends have the contents of the treasure chest. Lupa has no interest in riches, and friends may find them useful. Please take this piece of giant's treasure too, in an old family heirloom. I have finished studying it. Friends might find a use for it. I told Gravypon I would solve the riddle of King Agni's tomb. Now I have fulfilled that promise. Not only do we get to open that chest, but we get Heart of the Giants, 
we actually got the daring of the giants from that side quest that I was talking about earlier. You know, that one that was in uh, Satoral Marsh that I quit without saving because we didn't have Fiora? Yeah, that one also gave us the daring of the giants, and I said that we could not find a use for that at the time, but might want to take, us, take that with us. Well, we'll want to take this with us as well. We get a lot of affinity and quite a lot of experience for that, but that's not all. Not only is this quest really interesting in that it gave us another Giants item, having not seen that since our first visit to Satoral Marsh, but we can now open that box! Inside we find three item orbs for Magna Forest. Pretty standard, but the thing you really want to see within the chest lies. Eater Records and Battle Soul. Should we go into our art books? Shul can now level up Battle Soul to level 10. You do not need to get any sort of art book from a store or anything like that. You can just get it. But what about Eater Records? What exactly does that mean? Well, apparently to the Giants, it meant unlocking a new Monado art. And just outside the ruins, this Swelo or Aluga looks like just the poor sap to test out a new Monado art on. So let's do this. Monado Eater is very unique. It removes all enemy buffs and inflicts bleed on the enemy. If an enemy has a buff that's going to like make a vision come true or something like that, you can use it to deal with that. Um, you can just use it on an enemy that has some really annoying buffs if you want to do that. Uh, sometimes overlooked details that Monado Eater is actually an ether art, giving Shulk an option to deal with ether type enemies. Not only that, but it only eats up 75% of the talent gauge as opposed to all of it. It is a unique art, the only thing is that leveling it up will merely increase the damage, not the time effect, so keep that in mind if you want to spend AP on it. All in all though, it's a Monado art that I don't personally use all that much, but still. You need 3 star affinity with Central Bionis in order to do the side quest, and it really just goes to show all the cool stuff that you can do should you go out for 100%, because seriously. On my first playthrough, I didn't get this Monado art. I actually thought there was just an empty space there, I did not know. It was just real. It was just the coolest thing ever. When I replayed this months later, and I found that on my own, I couldn't believe it. So with all that said and done, we have seen foreshadowing to Xenoblade Chronicles X. We got a new item from the ancient giant civilization to take with us on our journey. We figured out the mystery of the Machna ruins, and we got a new Monado art unlocked for Shulk. But are we done? Oh, sweet by honest no. Because right over here by the Great Machna Falls, just overlooking it. We have a heart-to-heart -heart that we can now view. Between Shulk and Melia, no less. Fallen Brethren. Something bothering you, Melia? Forgive me, Shulk. I'm not myself today. That is a horrible thing to say in this situation. Just saying. We'll see what it says later. What's wrong? It happened before I met you. In this spot, my four protectors laid down their lives for me. Really? I didn't know. Was it when you fought the Telethia? Yes, until that day the four of them accompanied me everywhere. They were true friends to me. I grieve for them deeply. Why is Shulk such a dick in this one? Let's pick they sound like great people. They were indeed. I have spent the bulk of my life hidden away in the Imperial Villa. They took care of me for all that time. You must have been close. It's sad to lose people like that. Shulk, will you help me? I want to give them a proper sending off. Of course, we'll do it together, you and me. Thank you, Shulk. My fallen brethren, I promise to live my life to the fullest. Look over me as I journey on. That is such a sweet heart to heart, but the alternate choices are horrible. Just like, they must have gotten on your nerves saying this about four dead people that she's grieving for that were her good friends. That is so bad. Uh, but we'll get to see Shulk being a dick in the end slate of this video. And speaking of which, next time on Xenoblade Chronicles, we're going to be going around the world of Bionis a little bit more and doing some more side quests now that we have Fiora in the party and seeing some more sights with her. See you guys then.
Yeah.